Hey there, true crime friends. The other day, we talked about the Black Swan murder case. I think I did it in the morning. This case is prime, prime, I'm telling you, for true crime at lunchtime or lunchtime true crime. I can never remember what I call it, but listen, I got some more information and I was like, oh, I got to talk to the girls about it and the guys, but you know, the girls. So look, this is the case of Ashley Benefield who killed her husband, whose name I forgot. But don't confuse this Ashley Benefield with Ashley Banfield from Court TV. Um, what's going on with the Ashleys? There's another Ashley bad lady out here. But anyway, listen, I don't know that this lady is a bad lady. I'm just going to tell you what happened and you decide. Did she snap or was it self-defense? Okay, so here's the tea. To catch you up in case you missed Fridays, although you should, by all rights, go back and watch Friday morning's video. But let me just run it down for you real fast. So this very nice gentleman, whose name I forget, um, was married for a very long time. He had a teenage daughter. He and his wife living happily ever after. The wife had a heart condition. Daisy, you don't have to bring that up here to squeak it. Um, wife had a heart condition and dropped over dead. The teenage daughter found her. It was a terrible situation. Everybody was upset. Okay, so the dude is saying to his daughter, don't worry, I'm going to be your mother. I'm going to be your father. I'm going to be your BFF. We're going to get through this. And the teenage daughter was like, okay, dad, that sounds great. And so they're doing all right, right? They're grieving. They're going along. Then the father, who was like very religious, very conservative, goes to um, a political fundraiser. And he meets a beautiful young woman. So beautiful that she's like 30 years younger than him. Sir, I'm going to need you to calm down. 30, 30 years? 10, 20 years? Okay. 30? Okay. So whatever. So this 50-something-year-old man meets this woman in her early, early 20s. He was in his mid to late 50s. So um, he meets her. She's beautiful. They start dating. And I thought it was after 10 days of dating. No, they showed more restraint than that. After 13 days of dating, they get married. Only they don't tell anybody. They don't tell friends. They don't tell family. They don't tell anybody. They just get married. So um, the daughter overhears the dad on the phone talking. And somebody was like, oh, well, what about Ashley? And, he, and the daughter was like, wait, who's Ashley? What's going on? So the dad was like, oh, um, I want you to meet this girl I'm dating. And so the daughter is like, you know, teenager. She was like, mm, okay, mommy just died nine months ago. Uh, you dating already? Okay, whatever. So finally, the daughter's in her room one day. And um, the dad is like, um, hey, Eva, why don't you come here for a second? Come, come, come. I just want to tell you a little something about me and Ashley. So, you know, Eva, she's a teenager. She was just like, okay, here we go. The only thing you could tell me about her is that y'all got engaged. And she was like, the dad was like, mm, actually, we got married. Listen, you know, Eva had all the side eye in the world for her daddy. She was like, oh, okay, dad, whatever. Ooh, child, was hot up here. Anyway, so now Eva is like, all the eye rolling that she can stand, right? But she has a, Eva has a girlfriend. She's hanging out with her, not like a girlfriend, girlfriend, but just like a friend. So she's hanging out with her friend and ultimately her friend comes to live in the house. So now in this house is a newly married couple and two teenagers, both of whom are giving this stepmother all the side eye in the world. And this 20 something stepmother is trying to parent this teenage daughter. Listen, the fact that this is not a snapped case where um, the teenagers unalive the stepmother, to me, nothing short of a miracle. So this dad, who was clearly not that great with communication when it comes to his teenage daughter, was like, yeah, um, me and my new wife, we're going to start like a ballet company. and We're going to do all these other things. And the daughter was like, OK, dad, whatever, because, you know, she was rolling her eyes right out of her head. And so then the daughter was like, wait, is Ashley pregnant? This must be a surprise. Come to find out, Ashley was not only pregnant, the daddy had had a vasectomy. He went and got the vasectomy unvasected so this girl could get pregnant. What? Okay, fine. But um, the, the man and his wife, Ashley, got into an argument. An argument so bad it had something to do with them teenagers because you know teenagers. Something to do with the teenagers and the stepmama. They was fighting back and forth and the dad pulls out a gun and fires the gun into the ceiling. Okay, that's a problem. And then Ashley started getting really, really morning sick and she was like, I know my body because I'm a ballerina and I'm sicker than I think I should be. Ma'am, this is your first pregnancy. You don't know how sick you're supposed to be. Like, you just get sick. And you're done being sick when you're done being sick. But she was like, obviously, he's poisoning me. And so um, she's like, um, tell you what, 
honey, I'm gonna go stay with my mom because you have to work and your teenage daughter hates me and I'm gonna stay by my mom. And um, when the baby comes, then, you know, we'll have a nice family reunion and you'll be there and it'll be great. And we're gonna name the baby some name. We, they never said what the original name was. So I was like, okay, fine. So girl goes down to live with her mama. The, the man and his daughter stay in the house. Everything is great. Meanwhile, Ashley is telling everybody, he's poisoning me, he's poisoning me, he's poisoning me. Nobody believes her. She gets all these hair tests, all these other kind of tests. There's no sign of poison in her system, but you can't convince her. So I'm like, maybe it was like a teensy bit of psychosis, right? Just like, like a little, just like a skosh of like, I'm pregnant craziness. That could happen. Sometimes it affects your mental health. So, okay. So she goes to the hospital and she's like, um, your honor, no, doctor, um, my husband is clearly poisoning me, even though I live very far from him and he's nowhere near me. I think he's stalking me. Look, these people lived in Virginia. The girl went to live with her mama in Florida. It's not like he was going to drop by. He had a full-time job. He's sending her money. He's taking care of her. He's doing everything he's supposed to do, but she's 100% convinced he's stalking her and poisoning her. So she goes to the hospital and she's like, um, my baby has been exposed to poison in utero. So I'm going to need to have the baby delivered early. And they were like, um... Okay, so she has the baby, a C-section, induction, whatever, three weeks early and doesn't tell her husband. And so some time goes by, like a week after the baby is due, he was like, hey girl, um, did you get that money I sent you? How you feeling? What's going on with the baby? And she's like, oh, um, I had the baby and I named the baby Emerson. I know that's not the name we discussed. And I gave the baby my last name instead of your last name. And I left your name off the birth certificate. Can you send more money? And he was like, what? So he goes to court to start seeing his baby and she goes to court and she was like, your honor, there are things I need to tell you about. And um, the judge was like, okay, come forward. Tell me all your stories. And she's like, he poisoned me. Um, he shot a gun at me and he punched out a dog. Child, once I heard about the dog, I was like, oh, well, obviously that was a public service homicide. You cannot be punching out dogs. There is no reasonable reason why you would punch out a dog, even a large dog, but you punched out a dog, sir, and you shot a gun at your wife, into the ceiling near your wife, but okay, and maybe she's crazy, but also maybe you're garbage. Maybe everybody is garbage. I do not know. So the judge listened to all the evidence. Now, you know, I did not have all the evidence. Obviously, I did not because I'm just a gossip channel. So the judge listened to all the evidence. It was like, right, right, right. Okay, this is what I've determined. Um, the gun fireation was an accident. He obviously did not poison you. You brought up a quack. You brought a quack up in here to say that he did poison you. I find that he did not. And the punching out of the dog, that was also another accident. I'm still unclear as to how the dog got punched out. And I need to know everything about the punching of the dog, but I'm gonna go with the judge. Although I'm looking at her with some side eye now too. So um, the judge is like, so the man can see his daughter and the wife is like, oh, okay. So takes the little baby and they go and they have a happy family reunion. And the wife is like, oh, well, since you um, obviously you're gonna have visitation, then we're gonna be a family now and let's just live happily ever after. And the dude was like, great. So I got a new job down there in Florida. You don't even have to move. My daughter is now old enough that she can live on her own. She's off to college, whatever. I'm gonna move to Florida. I'm gonna be close to you. We're gonna be a family. And Ashley was like, okay, great so they're packing up the house they got like a new apartment together so they can live together in florida and he turns his back and bends over to pick up a box and ashley shoots him four times in the back and then runs out of the house and says it was self-defense ma'am um if you're shooting an unarmed person in the back it's unlikely that that's self-defense. Now, she did say she was pushed and she did say she was punched. Personally, if you push me, then that is grounds for me to shoot you, theoretically. But um, there's like no evidence that she was pushed. There's like a little scratch on her little tummy. But I was like, girl, that's something, you could have got that for moving. What are you talking about? And so now I, I, when all the family and friends got called, they were like, ring, ring, what? Um, uh, Sheriff, this is you? Oh, Ashley obviously killed him, right? Everybody guessed immediately like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She obviously killed him. So now Ashley keeps going to court and she's like, she's having a stand your ground defense. Like, listen, this was, I, 
I was under a domestic violence situation. I had an escape plan. I don't know. But then in one of the court hearings, they played um, the judge giving her reading from family court where she was like, there's not one scintilla of evidence that anything you say is true, Miss Ashley. You are garbage. I'm trying to say it nicely, but you are garbage. Now, you know, those were not her exact words. I'm summarizing, but that's basically what she said. And so she's like, this court finds you to be trash. And so Ashley was upset. Now, the one smart thing that Miss Ashley did do is that as soon as she shot her husband four times in the back, she went and lawyered up and she has not spoken to the police from that day to this. That was five years ago. Here's the thing. I personally believe my opinion for enter entertainment purposes only or whatever. Don't sue me. Um, I personally believe that both of them had bad judgment, that both of them were not that good of people. Even if the dad was like a decent dad, he probably was not a great husband. The punching of the dog and the shooting at the ceiling. I don't care what the reason was. Did he drop the gun and he shot? No, sir. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So um, I suspect that they were both garbage. I also suspect she might walk on this. You know why? Because A, she's a pretty skinny white lady. Um, She has a little baby and um, she hasn't spoken to the cops. From day one, she has never given a statement. She was not like, oh, I'm going to help them understand. Let me talk. Let me. Girlfriend has said nothing that was not through her attorney. That is so smart. I have too big of a mouth to go out like that. I'd be like, officer, let me just. Well, I told you the story about me getting read my rights. And like, obviously, I would be up under the jail. But I am charming and delightful. So maybe I could talk my way out of it. Unclear. Anyway, I'm still keeping my eye on this um, Black Swan murder case. Also, uh, the Ashley Benefield murder trial. It hasn't even been set for court yet. The judge heard all the stand your ground information on Friday and he's gonna come back to us soon. They didn't say how soon was soon, but um, they're gonna let us know what he decides. Child, I'm perched. I'm gonna be perched right here on the edge of this chair waiting to find out what happens. Okay, gonna finish the rest of your sandwich and um, I'll see you tomorrow here at True Crime Lunchtime. Lunchtime True Crime. Also, where's our favorite psychic? Reverend Serafina, Rev, right, Reverend, what was her name? Donna Serafina, Serafina Donna? I bet she knows what happened. We should get her. Okay, um, Donna, if Reverend Serafina, if you have, sip, put your contact in the in the comments and we can talk about this case. Oh, I want to, listen, Serafina, Donna, Donna, Serafina, she over there working that Lori Vallow case to death. I'm tired of Lori Vallow. We've moved past Lori Vallow. I'm going to need Serafina, Donna, Donna, Serafina to come on some new cases. She can check out this one and just let us know what happens. But um, until then, okay, enjoy the rest of your lunch and I will talk to you soon. Bye.